Hello, this is Daniel Povey, and yesterday he mentioned this script, and today he's going to be taking us through it. Okay, so, so this is the main neural net training script in Caldi's LibreSpeech recipe. Uh, this is called at the end of run.sh, and you have to run most of those stages in run.sh before you can get to this because you need like the alignments and stuff. Now, uh, now, before you run this script, you have to make sure you, ha you have a GPU or preferably more than one GPU on your machine. Like they have to be NVIDIA GPUs uh, and you, they, have, they should probably have enough memory, like at least a few gigabytes. Uh, and Caldi has to be compiled for GPU, which means that when you configure Caldi, you have to have NVCC, the NVIDIA compiler on your, on your uh, path. Okay, let's scroll. Anyway, it'll tell you if you got that wrong. It'll give you a warning or something. Let's go down a bit. Uh, go down. Uh, further down. Okay, okay. So, I mean, this is all comments still. Yeah, okay, here. This is the start of the actual script. So, okay, sorry, a bit up. So the first part, well, the first significant part, apart from setting variables, is local nnet3 run ivector common.sh. So in, in Caldi's neural net recipes, we used uh, ivectors for a basic form of, uh, of speaker adaptation. So it's an extra input as well as the MFCCs. Uh, so this run ivector common, I believe this is training an ivector extractor, which is Kind of a speaker id system but it's like a bunch of gaussians and matrices and stuff it, it's a way to get these i vectors so we uh we run that let's go down a bit you don't have to change these directories as long as you run the run.sh but they can be changed if you want to use for instance you know a different base system but some of these things have to be matched with each other for instance i think the alignment directory has to be from the same GMM as the GMMD or stuff like that. GMM is Gaussian mixture model. Okay, so run chain common dot sh. That this is uh, a bunch of stuff that's that's common to most of the uh, that that's common to most of these uh, recipes in this directory local chain. It's it's things like uh, getting alignments, building a simple left by phone tree, which is what we use in these so-called chain systems, which is lattice free MMI. Getting a left by phone tree, like aligning the data with it, uh, dumping higher dimensional MFCCs because we use, I think, 13 dimensional MFCC for the GMM systems, but we go up to 40 uh, for uh, these neural net systems. So that's one of the things that that, I believe that's one of the things that 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 thing does. It's done either there or in run i vector common. Okay, so this stage 14, this is the main, uh, this, this is, uh, you know, getting more specifically into the script. So we set a bunch of variables, like various opts uh, to configure the neural network. The, this, this script is creating this network.x config, which is a kind of config file that specifies the network topology. So these TDNN F layers, this is a kind of factorized TDNN, which is the same as a 1D convolution. Uh, I mean, it has some similarities to ResNet, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a slightly different, uh, it's a slightly different topology. Uh, the, the kind of feed through dimension of this thing is 1536. And in, in each layer, there's like a small bottleneck that has a nonlinearity. It's a little bit different from conventional systems have a fairly small dimension that goes through and then there's a wide bottleneck. This just turned out to work better when we were tuning it. Uh, the time stride, like time stride equals one and three, that refers to uh, kind of, are we doing it at 100 frames per second or like 33 frames per second? Uh, so in, in something like Torch, this would be done differently. There's no notion of time stride in Torch because uh, 
when when you subsample in torture or tensorflow you do that like explicitly you call something that subsamples the data now uh Caldi's neural net tools they do the subsampling implicitly because uh you're you're asking for the neural net output once every three frames and it figures out that because all of those last layers have time stride of three it figures out that it only needs one in every three frames and it just computes them so it, it's a kind of it's a slightly different approach to specifying neural networks so anyway so that's the core of the network the tdnf things we have a couple of different outputs we have uh output layer name equals output and one name equals output dash x n meaning cross entropy so the output is for like the lattice free mmi output which is what we call chain and the output x n is for like smoothing with uh smoothing with uh maximum likelihood over uh over an alignment. The alignment is actually derived from the first output, the uh, the lattice for MMI, although it is constrained by the lattices that you originally dumped. So it doesn't deviate more than a few frames on the left and right from your training data alignments. Okay, let's go down a little bit. Okay, X config to configs, that takes this like X config file and it turns into a, a format that the Caldi binaries can directly use. It kind of expands them into components. You know, as I said, Caldi's neural net tools work quite differently from things like Torch. I'm not saying it's a better design; it's just different. Uh, okay, so stage 15 is train.py. This is the main training script. So the main thing that you might have to change if you run this. Is the num jobs initial and the num jobs final? <clears throat> because this num jobs is the number of uh, of GPUs that you're using, and by default it starts at a certain number, let's say three, and it goes up to uh, to sixteen. The idea is that you don't need so many GPUs at the start because it doesn't actually help you that much in speed because you're limited more by the probability of divergence than you are by like data noise. Now, this isn't always that well suited to, to, to your system. Like the way the system used to work at Hopkins, we were, we were running these individual jobs, uh, these individual phases of training separately on a queue. But if you just have to log into a machine and run a certain number of jobs, you probably want that fixed. So what I'm getting to is you probably want to set the num jobs initial and final to be the same. Uh, and it could be like four or eight or however many GPUs you have on your machine. Now it will take more iterations. It'll take a bit longer if you use fewer GPUs, but it, it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't be too bad speed wise. I don't know. Maybe it'll take 12 or 24 hours to train this thing. Uh, that's very rough though. Okay. So now before you run this thing, there is something that you have to watch out for, which is this, the, the, the CalD binaries really expect the GPUs to be in exclusive mode. Uh, I think it's, you can set the GPUs to exclusive mode by doing NVIDIA, C, NVIDIA SMI minus C, I think it's zero, but it might be three or something else, but it's, it's, it's something like that. Anyway, if you get this wrong, the logs will tell you what to do, you know, from, from these programs. Uh, now, if, if you, uh, let, let me think, there is a fix if you're not able to set the GPUs to exclusive mode because you don't have root. Uh, the, the, the problem that it causes is that, basically the jobs won't know which GPU to grab because it by default, they'll select the GPU that has the most memory free. But if two jobs launch at the same time, they'll be, uh, they'll end up, uh, they might end up using the same GPU and then one of them will fail from out of memory. 
So, I mean, this is a little bit tricky to solve if you don't, if you don't have root. There are ways though, you can like introduce random delays in the script. Like, so the way Kaldi works, uh, this, this option on line 264, minus minus command decode command, uh, normally you'd set that to like run.pl or q.pl or, or, or something like that, probably with options. And you can find examples uh, in run.sh or in the command.sh, cmd.sh. Uh, so that's basically a kind of wrapper script that submits your job in a standardized, uh, using a standardized interface so that Kali doesn't have to care about whether you're using like grid engine or just running on the command line or slurm or whatever you're using. Uh, so anyway, it might be possible to introduce a random delay in the run.sh. And I think people have found ways to fix this. Anyway, let me see if there's any other interesting options. Uh, if we were tuning this script, probably the main thing that we try to tune is the initial effective L rate and the final effective L rate. Generally speaking, we find that this is like an exponentially decreasing learning rate schedule. Generally, we find that a factor of 10 between the initial and final learning rates tends to work better, uh, work best. H however, personally, if I wanna try to make it train faster, I might try to increase the L2, uh, which we specified above when we created the network config. Can we go up again? Uh, and a bit further. There's some variables if we go a bit higher, like uh, TDNF ops that has like L2 equals, we still have to go a bit higher. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 not that high. I think there's a delay. It's like L2 is point, sorry, it's, it's on stage 14, the beginning of stage 14. No, 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 further down beginning. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. So L2 regular rise equals 0 0.008. So that's like parameter decay uh, on, on every uh, on every step. It, it's decreasing the parameters. That's also called weight decay, and uh, that's going to effectively control that times the actual learning rate is what really sets the learning rate, because if the parameters are smaller and you change them by a certain amount, the relative change like is larger. And because there's, uh, I believe batch norm layers in this topology inside the TTNF layer, uh, it doesn't matter that the activations are smaller because they'll just be normalized. Okay, let's, let's go back down to stage 15. Yeah, so that stuff about host name equals CLSP and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can, uh, you can pretty much ignore that. That's for uh, splitting storage across multiple disks. These days, it, you probably have a fast individual disk. Like with solid state drives, disks are getting quite fast, so it may not be necessary to stripe across disks like that. Okay, let me see if there's any other... Uh, most of these other things in the script, you probably won't want to tune. Okay, let's go down to stage 16. This make graph.sh, this is creating a decoding graph like a finite state transducer that encodes the language model information and the dictionary. Stage 17, this is setting off a bunch of decoding jobs in the background. Basically, it's decoding a uh, one of the test sets. Then it's doing various LM rescoring steps. Uh, you, you can probably ignore from stage 18, this is about online decoding. Uh, this is kind of a demo uh, that's geared towards some people need to build real-time applications and this online decoding, it's a kind of decoding that simulates what you would do if you had a real-time problem so that you needed to recognize things as they were coming in. Okay, let's go to the uh, top, just the very top of the script. So this is where the 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 complete top like right at the top 
there may be some kind of delay. Yeah, here we go. So this is the word error rates. You know, we haven't edited this for a few years because we haven't really changed the system. Uh, unfortunately, it's been hard to, inside the Kali framework to implement some of the new things people are doing like transformers. And I've moved on to so-called next-gen Kaldi, like the, uh, if you look at Icefall and K2, uh, I'm mostly working on that now, but these are the results we have, like 3.3 .3 on test clean is our, is our best result. I believe that left column, oh, sorry, 3.29 with the system on, on test clean. Oh, sorry, no, that's dev. Let me look for test. Test is uh, 3.8. So that's not a great number. Uh, these days, in the last few years, people have really improved on Libre Speech. We're down to, we're down to even like 1.9. Now, the only caveat is, so you may think that, okay, modern end-to-end -end systems are doing so much better than Caldi. They're like getting half the word error rate on test clean of Libre Speech. So that is great, but there are some caveats. Uh, basically, if you want to build a product, uh, it's still a lot easier to do so with this kind of system because it's naturally real time. And also because it has a separate language model. So if you train your language model on a new type of data, you can easily recognize new data. Whereas with these end-to-end -end systems, they generally don't have language models that are separate. And it's actually really hard to combine them with language models. So, uh, so if if you like want you have a new customer and you want to train some language model on their data, it's actually really hard to do that with an end-to-end -end system. And things like adding words is also difficult. I mean, end-to-end -end systems they may not have a vocabulary as such. They may have these word pieces or something, but still adding new words is hard because it, the system kind of learns implicitly in a very in a hard to debug way what words there are and unless you just add to the data and retrain or fine tune it's really hard to uh it's really hard to quickly tune your model but anyway it is what it is let's uh maybe that's all for today okay thank you bye bye <laughs>